Another Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf, and I'm so excited to see you today. So uh, we have a great show planned for you. But before we go there, I just want you to know we are live on Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube channels. We can see all your comments and all your questions. And those of you that follow, I hide the Wolf Pack, but all of you that follow that maybe got my newsletter this week, you know that don't call me the squirrel lady, but I have a little issue with squirrels because I feed them nuts and they become my little pets outdoor, of course. Uh, they have recently chewed through my internet cords, so that was not good. But this, I was just talking to Barb because Barb and Kathy are joining us and my alarm at the house went off and you all have to see this because you really cannot make this up. Are you ready? My alarm went off because my little friend was at the back door. Here you go. <laughs> He's begging for his breakfast. <laughs> I already fed him. I Where do they put these nuts? Anyways, I'm going to someday find like a box or something or a whole little pile somewhere hidden near my house. But anyways, that's your squirrel story for the day. So say hi, say where you're from. Bar Jack is joining and so is Kathy Stipe. If Kathy's internet was a little bit off today, so hopefully she'll be here, but they have the cutest project for you. So let's bring Barb up. Hi, Barb. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Great and enjoying starting to do things for the holidays. Oh my gosh, isn't this wonderful? So I gave them a little tip, but you have so many cute projects. The best part of my job is I get to see everything before you do. And these are awfully cute. You want to tell them what you're going to be working on? So I've got two projects for Halloween for tables, uh, sorry, Thanksgiving for tablescaping. And then I have a tablescape idea for Christmas. And then I have a couple other place card settings and a stocking, which will surprise you all. Oh, uh, I saw the stocking. It's really cute. It doesn't have to do with squirrels, but it is kind of animal related. Can I give them that tip at least? Can you get a what? <laughs> Can I, I'm going to give them that tip that it's not a squirrel, but it is animal related. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, Barb, uh, Kathy has not joined us yet, so I'll let you take it away and then hopefully her technology comes back. If not, we'll keep rolling. Okay, I will get it started. Uh, my first project was an inspiration that I saw on Facebook last year, and it was where people gave pieces of paper out to everybody in the family and they wrote down things they were thankful for. And then that person would take those and put them on a pumpkin. So ideas like this, right around the pumpkin and it's all the things the family people are thankful for. And, that, and then it becomes your centerpiece for Thanksgiving. That was fun, except then you need to throw it away because it's going to rot, right? <laughs> So I took that idea and I went someplace different with it so it will last a little longer. And I took felt leaves. So mm -hmm. you can cut these on your scan and cut. And I took different colors of felt leaves or you can get them wherever. And then I wrote or embroidered all the things people were thankful for all over these leaves and attached them to turn them into a table runner for Thanksgiving so that will last a whole lot longer. So let me show you exactly how I did that. That's a really great idea, by the way. I love this idea and we're getting this a whole week early so we can do this next week. <laughs> so I hooped up a water soluble, lightweight water soluble, adhesive backed water soluble stabilizer from Brother. And that's this. I would have done tearaway adhesive backed, but I didn't have any. So this one is SA5906 if you're interested. So you can do the, either the adhesive backed hair away or the water soluble. You hope and you said, it, you, are, you said SA956? I said SA5906. 5906, got it. So you hoop it with the shiny side up. There is a shiny side and a not shiny side. And then you take a pin and you simply score the stabilizer and then you tear it away. That's all you have to do. And then this portion is sticky. All of this is sticky because how are you going to hoop that leaf in a way that you can actually um, embroider to the edges? You wouldn't be able to. So I'm just gonna stick it on here real quick and then we're gonna move right over to our machine. So let's do that. 
I can see you all saying, yes, she has a lot of great fun projects for you. So keep asking your questions. We'll take a break and grab those shortly, but we'll keep watching what she's doing first. Okay, so we're just going to stick this down on this adhesive back stabilizer. And then I'm going to go into embroidery where I'm going to add a word that was on. I did, I wrote down everything everybody was grateful for on all these pieces of paper. And I'm going to pick different fonts for different words. Um, one of my grandkids, college grandkids, was grateful for uh, sleep. <laughs> Pretty funny. So I set the word and I'm going to now scan the leaf. So there's my background scan, scan and okay. Oops, put my lever down and scan and okay. And it's now gonna scan the leaf in the hoop and show it up on the screen. Now, why am I doing this instead of the projector? Because, um, I don't know why it's not moving. <laughs> That's because okay. we're live. <laughs> turn it down and bring it back up because I don't have any idea why it didn't move. I'm using the background scan because I'm going to bring up all the words that are going to go on one leaf and then stitch them all out. And I want to visually see them on the screen so I can place them wherever I feel like is a good position for whichever words because some are longer, some are shorter, some are um, bigger. Some are smaller. That's you know the whole idea of getting these all on a leaf. So I have to go in and grab a word again. Hey, uh, Barb, while you're bringing that word back up, Anne just wants to know, and there was a few of these. Uh, did you actually cut that leaf on the scan and cut, or did you just purchase it at a craft store? I cut some leaves that I worked on, and I purchased others online. So gotcha. This, this is one that I did cut on scan and cut, and it's pretty thick, but you know you can do three millimeters. Wow. So you cut that one on the scan and cut. That's what a lot of people were asking because we can see from our angle that that's pretty thick. Is that just foam or what is that? No, it's a uh, felt, craft felt. Wow. That, that looks like that's really good looking felt. <laughs> that is. <laughs> and that's half of the battle. You want to make sure you get good quality products to work with. All right. So now it's moving. It's happier. So it's going to recognize this leaf and show up on my screen. And then I'll show you how I can move the word to where I want and also change the color of each word. And it's pretty simple. So I just want to let you see how I do this. So I'm going to move sleep up here and then I can play with that. I can move it around and, um, you know, do some um, curving of it and all that kind of stuff. But let's change the color. So if I go in here to my color palette, and I select a color and I'm gonna do say um, a green on that. Then it's gonna change the color of the first letter in the word. But if I select these three spools right here and change the color, it will change the whole word for you at one time, which is really valuable. So now for fun, I saved a whole leaf that I had done in my memory pocket. I'm going to bring that up so you can see. Uh, these are all the leaves I did. <laughs> and there it is. It's not lined up because it's not in the same position that I did before, but I can go ahead and move this for you. I do want to go into embroidery because then when I move it, it will move the entire thing. If I did not do um, embroidery, then it would just move one word at a time. So obviously I had the leaf shaped a different way, but you'll see the idea where they're all different fonts and different colors to make it really fun. Some of the things they were thankful for are weekends, grandpa food, um, gifts, cookies, you can tell I have grandkids, warm baths and clean sheets, just a few of the things. That's, <laughs> that's I know. so cute. <laughs> so that's one of the um, projects and I will show you the finished product when we're done, I promise. But I need to delete that scan. So I went to my um, settings pages and on page 10, if I don't stitch it out, that's where I delete it. Okay, and now it's gone and I'll just go out of here. The second project I did for the Thanksgiving table was place cards. I like to 
place my people at the table where I want to, especially because some grandkids can't sit next to other grandkids without causing trouble, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> I took leaves and I put them on a hoop, again, with the same stabilizer. And yes, you did see some pins in there. And I will talk about that. So literally, I just went to the craft store and found fall leaves and I popped them off and put them on my hoop. They're not flat, so that's why there's some pins in there. So all I have to do for this one is put a name in because these are going to be place cards. So I'm just putting in my daughter's name and set. And, and this is the same concept. And again, I can change that color. So let's go in here. And this time, let's choose this the first time. And I'm going to do a bright yellow, I think. I can always change it again. And now I need to scan this background. Again, why am I scanning instead of doing the projector? Because I'm going to add all the names and stitch this whole hoop out at one time. And I'll show you next what the deal is with the pins. You want to make sure that you're not um, too close, that your embroidered foot is raised enough to go over these because they're not flat. Um, and then I need to just move page onto whatever leaf I want and I can do whatever I want with that. But to make sure I'm not sewing over a pin, very easily, I'm just going to magnify this. I can see my pin is over here and over there and over there. I'm not near the middle of my um, leaf. So I will show you a finished table setting with these also in just a minute. So again, remember how to erase this background since I didn't stitch it. We go to page 10 of our settings and we say delete and OK. You know, so Barb, I have to I just have to say by you showing that how to delete that, I can't even tell you how many emails I get from people or messages that how do I get that background off my page? And I can never remember what page it's on. Now I'll remember 10, but she showed that twice now. So that's a great, great, great tip. Thanks. And that's kind of why I did that. So the <laughs> next thing I did, uh, we're moving on to Christmas, is these are foam that you can cut out on your scan and cut and decorate any way you want to. And you'll notice that these are all plain. This time, I'm going to scan this, but in my design center as an image. So here's my scan key, and this is an image, and scan and OK. Why did I change to my design center? Because I want to be able to draw on top of these to add the embellishments that we're going to do. So take a look at that tree. Oh. Add, yep. I added the garland and the ornaments, and this one I put a teddy bear on it, and here I have a flower, and then I did the toe and the heel. This one got a heart. All of these are stamps out of my design center. Um, wow. And this is just drawing. So I'm going to show you how I did this one so you can see how simple it is. So it started plain like this, and now we are ready to, or almost ready, it's still scanning. And I want only an image because I don't want it to digitize anything. I just want to see it. So there it is. And it's not very bright. So this toggle bar up here, I can make that darker so I can see it better. And then later on when I'm actually drawing, I make it lighter so I can see what I've drawn better. So I'm going to start with the garland on the tree. So I actually, I'm going to draw, but I'm going to go into my properties for lines and I'm going to choose this stitch to be my garland. Okay. And I'm going to leave it black so you can see it better, even though I stitched it gray, it's silver. And then I want to draw on that um, tree. Well, I need it to be bigger. So do my zoom up to 400%, bring the tree into the middle of the screen and turn my drawing tool on. Watch how simple this is. Now, I am just going to draw garland as though you would put it on your tree. That's how simple that is. Wow, that is so <laughs> Okay, now you can't see the stitch yet, but I'll get there. Then the other thing I did was add ornaments. So I went into my shapes, I just grabbed a circle. Now this starts at six and a half inches big, so Obviously, I need it way smaller. So I'm just touching and holding the four arrows that face in so it proportionally 
uh, changes its size all the way down to a quarter of an inch. And of course, then all of a sudden it went really fast. <laughs> all right, so I have 0.25 and I don't see it here because it's way over on my screen. So I'll go back to 100%, find my circle, there it is, and just draw, drag, drag, darn it, it didn't grab, let's go back. It's not, let me grab it. All right, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna select it if I can find it. There it is. And I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> of course, why do we have technical problems? Because we're live. <laughs> That's the only reason. I'm reading everybody saying, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if it's not gonna let me move it any other way, I'll just go another way and I'll move it with the arrows. Usually I can touch and drag it. Now I'm gonna put it on my tree and the secret is do not let it touch the garland drawings. Why? Because when they touch, they want to take on the same properties as what they're touching. And I want this to be different. The line is a line and the ornaments are going to be ornaments. But I don't want to stitch that circle, okay? So line properties, don't sew. Fill bucket for lines and touch it. And it's no longer going to sew. So I want to duplicate it, but I can't duplicate it because it's grayed out. It's only because nothing is selected on the screen. So here's my select tool. The easy one is just that one and you touch it and there's a red box around it. So now this opened up for me. So duplicate and every time you du duplicate, just drag the ornament to wherever you want on the tree and fill the tree up with ornaments. I'm not going to go ahead and fill all of it, but I want to do enough that you can see how I fill the colors in. Okay, so one more. And now I want to fill the colors in. So I'm going to go to my region properties and pick a color. We'll start with red. That works. Turn on my flood fill bucket for region and find one of my ornaments, which I can't see. So I'm going to do this. There they are. Oh, we can see better. Whoa, look at that. Yep. We and can see that back. so much better now, too. We're like, oh, let's see, let's see. I'm like looking. <laughs> yeah. You, and that's why this is such a valuable thing. You want to see your background, you bring it up to the right. You want to see what you're drawing or putting in, you bring it to the left. And I just pick a bunch of colors because my tree is full of all kinds of colors. And then I'm just going to show you again. This is the tree I stitched with the garland and the oh, ornament. Oh my gosh. So, and you could use it, these as place cards also. Put Cyrus's name on there. And that's, like I said, this is a stamp from the design center, just size down. And then I put a fill inside of it. So you can do anything with these. Crazy. That's awesome. And by the way, is that felt too or is that foam? No, those are foam. Okay. So the leaf was felt. The other leaves for the place cards are silk leaves, I guess. You know, the, you know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, and then these pieces are foam. All can be done on the scan and cut. Wow. So I want to go to next so you can see how you can see that garland I drew. Up here, it's telling me it's it's now in the fills. And I'm good with the fills. I don't need to change them. But if I arrow through, there is my garland. I want to link it all together so I can change it once. And I'm going to space it apart a little bit because that's an awful lot of stuff. So when I say OK, it's going to go ahead and space it apart and be uh, much better looking. This one did a little bit of strange things. Some of these are above the line and some are below the line. And you know what? I was happy with that. It just turned out so cute, I thought. So oh, that, that is adorable. Yep, that's how you do these little ornaments or place cards um, on foam. Okay, let's get out of here. And here's my next one for you. This oh my goodness. By the way, I see a lot of you joined in late. Don't forget, I just want to interrupt. You can, if you're on Facebook, share this to your page. You can go back and watch this anytime because you're definitely going to want to go back and watch. And then you can hit pause and replay and all that. And on YouTube, just share it. Share it to your settings. There you go. Okay. 
so the next one I did was I got a request from my daughter to make a couple of stockings for her cats. I thought, okay. <laughs> so I came up with this. So here is my cat stocking. Oh I just, my goodness. I have that fabric. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. So I just took fuzzy fabric and I cut, um, I don't know, 12 and a half inch circles front and back. Nice. And then I created the whiskers and the ears in my design center. So let me show you how I do that. It's so simple. So in my design center, I want to draw lines. And yes, zigzag is what I use. So a satin stitch. But I want to draw straight lines. And you cannot draw a straight line in this program to save your life unless you have the tool that does that. And that's this straight line right here. Okay. Now that I've done that, I can draw a line and look, wherever I let go of the line is where it's going to go. That's how easy this is. And here are my whiskers. Seriously, that's all I did. Whiskers. Oh my <laughs> so goodness. Those on the fabric. And then I sewed the front and the back together, leaving, well, let me do the ears first so you can see how I did the ears. So clear this page. I just grabbed a stamp. I did this triangle with kind of the rounded corners and sized it down. I think I did like about four inches tall, but I stuffed it in until I liked the look of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I didn't know for sure <laughs> how big I'd want it. And then um, I made it a little bit skinnier, so three-ish skinny. And leaving enough to, you know, leave a quarter inch to sew them together. And then I added another one. I duplicated this and sized the one in the middle smaller because that's the one that I'm going to fill with the pink stitches for the inside of the ears. Okay, so I have a visual of where to go. So let's fill that in. Oops, I need to go to properties, grab a pink, and my bucket is full. And that's all I did to create these ears. So I, yeah, Barb, I'm looking at that as close as I can. That is, that's embroidered. I thought that was fabric. No, that's embroidered. That is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I, every, I'm going to take a vote for everyone watching this. How many people thought that was fabric versus embroidery? I'm just curious because I'm looking at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Now that is some gorgeous embroidery all from a couple clicks. Exactly. And so then I stitched this pink on a, a cotton white, same cotton I used for the lining, because outside of the ear is not pink and it's a little different looking than the back that has all the hair. So the back is, matches the face. And then I stitched those two together, leaving the bottom empty or you know, open so I could turn them right side out. And then you know how you put it like this when you put the two sides together to sew it inside and when you turn it right side out, it pops up. Oh my right? God, that cute. That. And then I made a lining just out of cotton, same way, sewed it together, left the this open, stuffed it inside, and then I turned the top and top stitched. That's it. So I've already had requests to do dogs. I don't know when or if that will happen, but. <laughs> hey, could you, could you do a squirrel for me? My squirrels would love little stockings full of nuts. <laughs> Too funny. All right, one more. And then I'm going to show you the finished uh, results. So All right. my next one is a combination of a hostess gift and a place card for Christmas. And it involves uh, stitching on uh, ribbon. So I have 12 guests for dinner. I have the same um, stabilizer, sticky stabilizer. I just put ribbon in my hoop. And it's the same old thing we did before, background scan, so I can add everything in. This time I'm going to add the year 2021 because I have done these for over 20 years and everybody has a set of ornaments for Christmas throughout the years. And some are themed and they remember, you know, just what that year was all about. Um, size this down and rotate it 90 degrees. And we're going to do our background scan to see where to place this. And then I'm going to duplicate the 2021 across all the ribbons. I won't do that on camera. I'll just do a few. 
And then I'll add the names one at a time. And I always just have a list of names so that I don't miss anybody while I'm doing it. So here's my 2021. Just going to grab it, close that, and move it. And it's not letting me grab, so we're going to do it a different way. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. You know, sometimes when your fingers are cold, it just doesn't want to read them. And it's cold here in Chicago. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move this up to the edge of a ribbon. I can magnify it to tweak it exactly as I need to. If I haven't laid the ribbon perfectly straight, I can rotate it. I've done that before. <laughs> All right. So let's magnify this a little bit. And I think I'm going to size it down also a little more. So let's go. Let's go 200. Use my pan hand to drag it into the screen. Pan, drag into the screen. <laughs> there we go. Move over a little bit, size it down just a little bit. And once I get it exactly where I need it, I can duplicate it. That's all I have to do. Okay. So let's duplicate this. We're going to go here, and I'm literally just going to touch and drag. Oh, come on. Turn pan off. Touch and drag each one of these onto a different ribbon. And then I'll come back and get really specific with each one. But that's all I do. And then I put the names at the other end. So it's time to show you exactly what I um, did with all of these projects. There we go. OK. Sorry, I, I have to unveil. <laughs> Look at this. <gasps> Oh, Barb, the big okay. reveal. Oh, so my goodness. Dining uh, for Thanksgiving place setting. And Caleb is going to sit here. And I can do some of the other main cards around the table. But here is your centerpiece of all of those things that the family wrote down that they were thankful for over last year. So different colors on these leaves facing different directions. The words go all different directions so no matter where you sit you can read some of the words easily you find the ones that you you know put down there so there is your thanksgiving um, idea for tablescaping and then we're going to move over here to our christmas and here is a christmas tablescape idea and this is the ornament with the ribbon on it. So you can see page of 2021 is going to sit at this place. And these snowflakes just cut out on skin and cut and thrown around the table to uh, make it a little more festive. So this oh is just gosh. a ornament that will hang on the tree. And the bow will go above the branch and the ornament falls below the branch. And that's what I have for you today. Oh my gosh. I'm re I'm just like in stunned. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to bring Kathy up here too with us. This is Barb. This is awesome. I'm reading the comments and everybody's like, oh my gosh, I have got to do this. So first of all, oh, we just lost Barb. <laughs> first of all, well, hi, Kathy. <laughs> they, look made it. It. they switched places. <laughs> I have to tell you, that was absolutely stunning. I mean, I usually pick up a few fun things. I am going to work on this because Thanksgiving is not until next Thursday. I'm having my family. I can't cook with beans, but I can sure make the table look good. I am going to have to rewatch this over and over. Everybody's saying unbelievable. And Kathy, you're even going to add more to this. Well, I'm going to add the table runner for the center of my table. We have um, this year, we're having 25 people to our home for Thanksgiving. That's families immediate families, cousins, second cousins. I mean, it's like a family reunion. So there's too many people to put a place setting. We just grab and go wherever you can find a chair to eat <laughs> around here. So some eat outside, some eat inside. There's tables all in throughout the house that they can sit at. So for the main dining table that the matriarchs sit at, my mom and my aunt, the matriarchs of our family. Um, I made a table runner and this is Ooh. one of the blocks. Oh, that's beautiful. 
This is another block. And then it just kind of repeats on the other side. But oh, wow. What I, what I did to make this, Angela, is I used that new advanced quilt design software. And I created um, the table runner in there. And you can print it out. You can also um, send the cut files from there to cut with your scan and cut. So that's how I cut my pieces. But if you don't have a scan and cut, there are templates that you can print. And the dashed line is your cutting line. Wow. Okay. So that was how I designed the table runner. And I really wanted you to see... Um, how I did the couching, but because I'm having technical difficulties here today, if Barb was. She's back. Barb is, is back. back. <laughs> Hi, Barb. <laughs> Although we're looking at her hand. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Barb, I have to tell you, I, I was hope, so glad you came back because people are just going crazy for your projects. <laughs> oh, and they're so simple. I mean, they're really simple. So rewatch and have fun touch a few buttons and you'll have some fun stuff awesome so, so i was Kathy, hoping that that barb could punch buttons on her machine just to show oh. you what i'm talking about could you do that for me barb yes that that's why that's what we call teamwork <laughs> <laughs> so oh oh is that a squirrel that's your squirrel <laughs> collecting his nuts and he's <laughs> thankful for them. Okay, Kathy, I'm dying. <laughs> well, I was laughing when you said something about doing a squirrel because I knew I had a squirrel here. <laughs> oh, gosh. So if Barb will go into embroidery for me and then go to the C category for our couching designs... I, oh, she's going to turn off her background so our squirrel's not on red ribbons. So bring in your squirrel, Barb. Uh -huh. And now um, make a custom stamp from him. Okay. I want just on the outside. I don't want the inside. Um, and just save it to my design center. Because I wanted to add quilting around my couched squirrel design. And you cannot add both of them at the same time because couching uses a different foot than embroidery. There's an embroidery couching foot that's specifically for couching your yarns. So what I ended up doing was I um, I went into my design center and I picked my custom stamp from my design center. So delete your squirrel. Sorry. <laughs> you see, it tells you you can't do both of those at the same time. So I took my squirrel and I added a decorative fill to the inside of the squirrel, and then a decorative fill to the outside to fit the 10 and a half by 10 and a half hoop. Oh, I see, so, yeah. So the, the squirrel has something inside of him. I could have filled it in with a solid fill if I had wanted to, but um, I just, I wanted something fast and easy because we have so many people that bring food. I'm making these into um, like hot pads. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me see it real quick, Kathy, and I'll fill in the fills. Let me bring it back up for you. Okay. So it's crackle on the inside and a leaf something on the outside. And they're browns. Okay. Oops. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to add leaves on the outside. And they were still brown. And I selected my um, 10 and a half by 10 and a half hoop. 
Yeah, that's what I did too. So that's okay. under your shape here, right up here. And that's what I selected too. So yeah, I mean, I would, what I did this morning was I stitched out um, all the background fill first. And then I went to embroidery and did the couching of the squirrel after it's all said and done after the background is stitched and these are gonna i just love the couching because i like the um texture that it gives to my project I didn't that's really cute quite as cute. carried away by the way that that yarn that you used anything special because that really looks nice and soft it was just your basic inexpensive yarn nothing okay. fancy um i don't crochet or knit so it's just Very whatever cute. whatever color skein that i can find at my local store <laughs> that will match my project basically is what it is but there's a good shot on barb's screen to show you what it looks like so you will embroider that out and then leave your fabric hooped and bring your squirrel couching design back in and then you'll in, embroider the um, couching design. I wish I, my computer was going to work so I could have shown you exactly how it's done. But, I mean, you can use the couching designs. This is just one of those little um, shawls. This wow, stays, that's gorgeous. It stays in my um, rolling bag that I take on the, on the airplane with me, and it just makes a nice little light lightweight cover up for mm -hmm. your shoulders whenever they've got it freezing in the mornings <laughs> <laughs> yes because everybody's traveling again now hey by the way does that um the, the couching embroidery foot that comes with the luminaire doesn't it it does okay and, and i'm pretty sure well i'm not positive is there a kit for that in case they have a different machine um, I'm not sure what Barb, do you know? Yeah, there is. Um, I'm trying to think of which machines it's for, like the V machines, yeah. so they're still high shank machines. Um, yeah, yeah. On, on like the Dreamweaver, Dream, all of those. Um, 50, 100 now. Yeah, there's a kit for embroidery. Yeah, for, so uh, what I would recommend for anybody that's looking for that, just uh, call your local brother dealer and see if they could order it for you and tell them what machine you have because you know there are a lot of different machines that'll help yeah so um my little time is going to be cut short because i didn't want to ask i mean i know barb's not set up like i am here where i've got it all set up to do the couching i don't know if i could move my ipad that's how i finally got in my computer has decided it's not going to play the game today <laughs> That's yeah. how it always is. It's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. You well, can come back and tell that another time. If I can get a good shot. All right. Will... Okay. And then while you leave, she's going to leave just for a... Oops, wrong one. I'm sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Let me bring Barb back. Hey, Barb, maybe you could help with a couple of these questions. And then I know you got to run too because she's off. We They are traveling again to events and I'm very excited to see this. So while Barb comes back to us, I see some of you asking, you want to see the foot? You want to, um, I will give you guys the website too, Darlene. But uh, the quilting software she used. And so Barb, I'm just curious, have you, uh, can you give any information on that quilting software? Yes, it's called the Advanced Quilt Software um, from Brother. And what's so amazing about it is you can you can create your own blocks and you can see it as it's creating. It will change the shapes of the pieces and the colors and it's really fun. I did a a, a velvet clutch in there, which Ooh. is absolutely amazing. And I cut it out on Scan and Cut because it gives you the cut file as well as um, creating everything. It's so cool. So it that's awesome. Okay, and um, I have started to play with that software too. I'm using it to design fabric. I absolutely love it. It's really fun. So something new that came out this fall that we haven't seen a lot of, uh, but you will be soon. Yeah. Marilyn wants to see the foot. Well, don't worry. If Kathy gets that on her, <laughs> on
on her machine, which I'm watching it right now. So you guys should all be happy that you're not watching. <laughs> but she's getting it. She's getting it. You got to love technology. The computer just went out this morning. So uh, what website do you find Brother Stabilizer and Embroidery Thread? I would recommend you can go to Brother Sews, which I have below. But I would also recommend looking for your local brother dealer because guess what? It's the holidays coming up. I'm pretty sure Black Friday's around the corner. And you know what that means. There's sales everywhere. And every dealer might even have extra promotions than what I even know about. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Yeah. I don't know. I have I have my list, Barb, while we're waiting for Kathy to come up. I have my list because my birthday is actually Cyber Monday this year and not Black Friday. So that gives me another reason to shop for my birthday. So I have to wait. So uh what I always tell my family. They're like, what do you want for your birthday? Um, <laughs> money so I can buy myself little toys. <laughs> so boring. I want to buy more sewing tools, more sewing tools. That's All right, Kathy need. is up. You up, Kathy? She's Maybe. Up. Can you see us? <laughs> nope. It sounds like, <laughs> hey, Kathy. She cannot hear us. I'll take her out for a minute. We might have to just end the show and we'll bring her back on. Barb, you don't happen to have that coaching foot anywhere around, do you? I do. Take me out for a second. I'll go find it. Okay. okay. And I'll bring <laughs> Kathy back up. Kathy, can you hear us? She cannot. So technology is technology. Barb's going to run and get that foot for you. And then we are going to, then we'll call it a show. Uh, that Those samples that Barb had were absolutely amazing. Uh, here's Barb. Hello, Kathy. Hi. <laughs> I don't have the, the um, packaging, but here's the foot. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. There's my... So... It has a hole in the toe, so you can put the, the yarn through there. Uh, this is a thread guide. It's actually a yarn guide. Um, and on the packaging, it gives you all the instructions of how to assemble. This is an arm that goes on the top of the machine very easily. It just sits on there, so you can guide the yarn through these two um, holes. And... Then it also comes with the foot, which you do this with your move it foot. And it also is a foot that has a hole in the plastic right there so that you can feed the yarn through there. Um, and like I said, all of these instructions of how to use it are in the packaging. I don't have an essay number. I'm sorry. I, that's all right. They'll get it. <laughs> I just asked Kathy, because Kathy's still, she has no sound. I just asked her if she could at least turn her camera towards the machine while it's couching. If she can do that, we can watch that as we close the show, because we don't have any sound with Kathy. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, Barb, your samples were great. Did anybody else have any last minute questions for Barb? Or we are calling it a day. Uh, Cindy wants to know, can we come to dinner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I only have 12 play settings, so. <laughs> can set a separate table that would be fun oh, there you go uh barb marcia has it hi hi marcia great to see you barb did you rinse all the pieces to remove the washway stabilizer or how'd you get rid of that i did not um let's see if i can pull the back of one of these up so here is the back of charlotte oh that's interesting um so there's still some pieces in there because i, I don't care i mean it sits on the table like this really but if you want to, you can. Uh, Q-tip does that well, or something that with cotton on the end of a little stick. You know what I mean? Yeah, and definitely. For the leaves, I still have some stabilizer in the back there. Oh um, yeah. If you wanted to, but I didn't. Okay, one more quick question for you: What blade for cutting the foam on the scan and cut did you use? I used my. Um, it's a the deep cut blade, so not the fabric. It's just the, uh, it's black. The, the tip of the blade is black. Uh, okay. You don't need to use rotary blade on the foam. Um, of course, I didn't on this foam. I mean, you got to figure it out. The rotary blade is what I use for the felt, though, because 
that stick and it needed a couple of passes. Definitely. Hey, Barb, there's some good uh, videos on how to do the couching. Just try it. It's really easy. The only thing you have to be careful of is the yarn in the back. Just make sure it's loose and go slow because if that yarn gets caught in the back. Hey, Kathy, can you hear us at all? She cannot. All right. So, Barb, this was an awesome show. I, uh, we have had some weird technology things going on, but great ideas for the holidays. Brother, thank you for taking us, taking over your page. Barb, safe travels to a wonderful brother dealer that you're going to. And if you have questions, always leave them. Where are you off to? If anybody's in Savannah this weekend, I'll be at Moy Sewing for Friday and Saturday. See you there. All right. Savannah, it's going to be gorgeous. So as you all know, if you're doing a project on the Brother Scan and Cut, make sure you use hashtag Scan and Cut. That is something new that they're using. Not new, but new that, uh, to my news. And uh, they love to see what you're working on. A lot of times they share it. And in the meantime, have a great day. Have a great weekend, everyone. And I will see you next week. Bye, Barb. Bye, everybody. Bye, It's not ending. Did this happen last week? This